From the time an American child reaches the sixth grade, they are taught that the key to success in life is to do well in high school so that they can get accepted to the best possible college. The better grades they get in high school, the better college they will have an opportunity to get into. They are taught that if they get into a great college and get their college degree, any type of job they desire in the field of their choice will be there waiting for them. After getting their dream job, they will be able to buy any car and house they desire start their own family, and live the American dream. Most Americans today have an expectation of future economic success simply by obtaining a college degree. The entire purpose of elementary school is to prepare students for high school, and the entire purpose of high school is to prepare students for college. In fact, the U.S. now has hundreds of private college preparatory high schools that, at a cost of $25,000 per year, are supposed to increase students chances of getting into a top-tier college. Students are taught to believe that if they don't go to college, they will be on a path to nowhere and will have no chance of ever building a successful career. Government regulations like No Child Left Behind have left grade and high schools in shambles. Instead of teachers having the freedom to think outside the box and use creative techniques to prepare their students for the real world, they are forced to be narrow-minded and teach with worthless information that will never help their students have successful careers. Today, there are no high schools left in America that teach students the knowledge necessary to start their own business, invent their own product, or even how to use the internet and other free resources to become educated about things without attending college. The annual cost to attend the average private four-year college in America today is $27,000 thousand two hundred ninety three dollars up twenty nine percent from five years ago during the 2005 2006 school year when the annual tuition cost twenty one thousand two hundred thirty five dollars this does not include the cost of textbooks which have tripled over the past decade. Colleges are now charging $200 for each single textbook that has no resale value because they put out new, slightly revised versions with a new name each year. The textbook publishers are even colluding with college bookstores to make custom textbooks so the students can't save money by buying them online. Colleges are getting kickbacks from publishers in order to destroy the used textbook market, which by itself is proof enough that college administrators are only interested in lining their own pockets and have no interest in helping their students. College tuition has seen 5.15% annual price inflation over the past five years. This is despite the fact that U.S. real estate prices are down 26% from their peak in July of 2006. And the Dow Jones is down 18% from its peak in October of 2007. Even oil is down 38% from its peak in July of 2008. During the financial crisis of 2008, Americans lost $10.2 trillion in paper wealth. And college is the only thing in America, besides the cost of health care, that did not at least temporarily decline in price. Over just a two-year period from December of 2007 through December of 2009, 8,363,000 jobs in America were lost or 6.1% of total jobs. One year later, in December of 2010, thanks to the Federal Reserve and the U.S. government spending $4.6 trillion on bailouts, stimulus programs, and other government spending, 1.124 million jobs in America, or 0.9% of total jobs, had been recovered. That is over $4 million spent for each job created. During an economic downturn when Americans are losing their jobs, their primary instinct is to seek higher education in order to make themselves more attractive to potential employers and better position themselves to receive a job. However, how are Americans supposed to spend $27,293 per year for college when they have no savings or income to pay for it? The U.S. government, with the backing of the Federal Reserve, in the same way they created the real estate bubble, by providing mortgages to all Americans through Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, 
regardless of whether or not they had any capacity to pay the loans back, has been using the exact same easy lending practices to create one of the largest bubbles in U.S. history, the college bubble. College students borrowed $106 billion in total student loans for the 2009-2010 school year, up from $96 billion in 2008-2009, $94 billion in 2007-2008, $87 billion in 2006-2007, and $83 billion in 2005-2006. Total student loan debt in the U.S. currently stands at $830 billion and now exceeds credit card debt. I was so pro-education. That's all I wanted in my life was an education. And, and you know, I'd like to still be pro-education, right. but to put anybody through what I've been through, no. Really, in my case, the education, I think, really ruined my life. College is now impossible for most students to afford without getting deeply into debt to do so. All across the country, Americans are graduating college with mortgages before they even buy a house. When I graduated with my undergraduate degree, uh, what, what you got in exchange for your education was lifetime indenture and a new house. Right, so you got to buy the mortgage. That's what you got. You got your degree, you got out of school, you, you got a job, and therefore you bought a house because culture drives you to buy a house. So now you're in debt, you have to work. Now you have to be part of the, the wage slave economy for the next 20 or 30 years until the house is paid off. These days, college is the new house, and you don't even get the house. As soon as you get out of school, you're indentured for life. When I walked out of dental school, I was $136,000 in debt, um, and I have paid in close to $100,000 right now. They say I owe $300,000, uh, so I still have quite a bit, obviously, that I can't manage anymore. Um, and I've done everything I can to try to manage it, but it becomes unmanageable at a certain point. Back in the 1970s, the average college student was able to afford their college tuition without any student loans or help from their parents. They were able to pay for college by working a part-time job year-round or by simply working full-time during the summer when they were off from school. Not only that, but they were also able to afford their own car payments and possibly a small apartment. Today, two-thirds of students are graduating college with an average student loan debt of $24,000 and the government is now making the situation many times worse by completely taking over the student loan business. Hidden inside of the recently passed health care bill, the government passed a complete student loan overhaul where they removed commercial banks from providing loans to students. Now, all students will receive their loans directly from the government at artificially low interest rates. There's absolutely no reason why we, the taxpayers, should be funding college education. And that's what we're doing when they're giving government aid. You know what my college debt was when I got out of school? $1,500. $1,500. You talk about inflation? You talk about inflation? You know what used to cost me a whole year to go to school? 2000 bucks, And that included room and board. You want to talk about inflation? You're never going to be able to get out from that debt. You're an indentured servant. That's right. That $120,000 you owe, the $80,000, the $40,000, the $250,000. If you're a good student that went to law school and you're that much in debt without a job, you have to pay it back. There is no way out. That's the system. 